Fundamentally, it provides reuse, the common concept of support and proportion, and it provides reuse content for multiple products, which um, are put to different reuse, it's kind of like variables in a sense, but it's a lot more powerful than variables. So, for instance, if you happen to have, I don't know, a platform or something like that, that you have to tweak for various different uh, organizations, parts of the government that need to use that. Um, fundamentally, this is about topic based authoring, topic based structured authoring. So, you're not, what one of the comments from um, Ellis this morning was uh, the waste there is with formatting, and you can to avoid that with something like this with structured authoring, because when you say open up a task topic, you're presenting to this with a step, within a step, there's a command, within a command, there's what you want to Within a step, there's a first information or, um, or the results of that step. So the, the structure obviously 
So that's a sort of monolithic, a batch process kind of review, but often quite typical. I'm just wondering, I've, I've not myself got involved in topic based review, but it would seem <coughs> to be a logical step forward. If you write topics um, as an author, is it possible to get folks so almost as soon as you finish writing that topic, you hand it straight over to somebody and say, Could you please review this? And whilst they're reviewing it, you're then working on topic two. 
and we finish talking to you from five so down. So by the time you get to the end of creating your document, you've actually only got two or three topics that are left at the end. So you potentially shorten the review process with just a, with a lump of review at the end down to just sort of uh, reviewing the last two topics. So far less to review at the end of the project and potentially save a significant amount of time. Um, but yeah, this is a kind of cynic in me, I suppose. Uh, certainly as an engineer, I very quickly learned about Murphy's Law. And I did actually work for a company, and I just, it was an extremely small document. It should have just gone straight through. But the people, it just took forever, and I just couldn't believe it. And I ended up coming up with the Murphy's Law for reviews. And uh, this, is, this is purely mine, it isn't out there anywhere else. So the less content there is to review, the longer the review will take. Why is that? Well, quite simply, if you put a small document in front of somebody, if you put a topic in front of somebody, they are more likely to read it, right? If you put 1,200 pages of a bumping great API document for dealing with HMRC tax, you know, <laughs> no disrespect, then they ain't going to read it. They'll skim read it and they'll turn it out and they'll, they'll say, well, how long have I got to stop to review this? And you say, well, I'd like it in a week's time, please. And they, they, you know, the back of their mind is thinking they must be joking, but they're going to skim read it. But if you put topics in front of them, that's, you know, eight or so, they're more likely to review it. So, I don't know, for me, the jury's out to some extent, because if you put a topic in front of somebody, as, a, as an author, at the back of your mind, you know where this fits within the document. You know that if you're working on it fast, there's probably a concept topic elsewhere. The reviewer is unlikely to know that, certainly off the cuff. If you put a task in front of them, the first thing they're going to do is say, uh, yeah, but isn't there some stuff before that the, the guy needs to read? Um, and, and he may say, well, before you do that task, you've got to have some reference uh, content as well that supports it. So just putting the task in front of it is likely to cause them to create a lot of questions, which admittedly could end up wasting your time. But I think over a period of time, if you're, if you, if you're working with topic-based authoring like this, <coughs> and you're trying to do topic reviews, then they should hopefully start to learn and understand that, yes, you've just put a topic in front of them, um, and, you know, maybe that's the way that you act, uh, uh, sorry, I'm just thinking that some tools have a, a kind of a web interface as well, so that they can actually see the context of it. Um, you know, over a period of time, they will learn how to sort of do a review within the topic scope, so there'll be a need to educate them and to help them out. So, anyway, so that's... Um, did the provider... So, this is... So, basically, I'm at the end of my talk. Um, I'd just like to say that DITA can provide a very flexible and efficient authoring environment. And DITA and topic-based authoring in review can work well with a data that manages. Um, and those are my contact details. If you have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to take them. I'm not going to answer questions about lightweight data, though. Um, <laughs> um, but anyway, any other questions about topic based or the instructions or the data, blah, 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 uh, happy to take them. Yeah, uh, Sarah Richards did a presentation at TC <coughs> where they were talking about reviewing the GBS, and she said they asked the <coughs> Only to check the factual accuracy, right. and nothing yeah. else. Yes. Yeah. So that would, yeah, that's so that's very, yeah. I kind of found that with. Sorry, I'll come to you in a bit. Um, I found that bit working with translation that when you put a translated document in front of, um, say, a sales and marketing guy within the country that's going to be sold, you put it in front of them, they end up rewriting it. Anyway, sorry, sir. Um, talk about um, 
topic-based reviews, and you go back to Doctor's Cohen, which has been mentioned a couple of times, your pull request review is the, the change topic yeah. and the background and the place in your um, content structure. So you don't actually have to have just the topic that's being reviewed. You can still provide the context for review. Um, yes, yes, certainly. Um, I mean, it, I think I would start off with, well, I, when I'm writing a document, I would start off by understanding the, who I'm writing it for. That's a fundamental thing. And then I would kind of work my way through a table of contents. And so it's quite possible that I've written, say, something which is going to describe something before I've written the task. Um, so I'm just sort of thinking, uh, you know, you're, you're doing the topic-based reviews as you're kind of writing it. They're kind of going in tandem. And it may be that not all of the support content is actually there whilst they're reviewing it. Um, I mean, that's, but, that's sort of what I mean, is instead right. of encapsulating the single topic one at a time and passing yes, them off. And, passing them on. you, and instead of bundling the whole PDF of 400 topics, you bundle the three that are related. Yes, and so yeah, that's review really, yeah, that would be the other way of doing it. Yeah, bundle, so just three and uh, Yeah, so sure. I'm sure I sure agree necessarily that uh, the topic based review, which is can be a very powerful tool, but uh, writing the topic based way is very culturally different to the yeah. way that we've written the our professions written stuff in the past. So we well, well topic based authoring and all these fancy clever tools from you know whoever is doing it, basically everything is fighting against words. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know that's where that, that's where everybody. Um, somebody, who, what's the Australian chap's name? Lost it. He described Word as a crack cocaine of documentation. <laughs> who was it? Um, chap in Australia. <laughs> Tony Self. Yeah, Tony Self. That's it. Um, crack cocaine. So yeah, you're always fighting against that. You know, your developers expect well, I'm going to work on. You know, what's this running topic thing? Go away. <laughs> Anyway, uh, any other questions? Okay, thank you very much indeed.